welcome everybody back to the Biconics Review of Honor tonight. Uh, the, we have our usual crew in house here on the BC Wrestle Pod joining us to go over Ring of Honor for this week. And uh, we're very excited to do that with you, all of you out there in BC Wrestle Pod land. Uh, before we put our hands in for the Code of Honor, and I remember to do it this time at the beginning, Jesse. I wanted to remind everyone that uh, we do this be not just because we like to talk wrestling, not just because we like to talk about a good product like ROH, but because we like to be able to share it with you. And the best way we can share it with you is you follow us on all our socials, you join us on YouTube, subscribing to that channel, clicking on that alert bell so you know when all of our weekly uploads come out for you, because we basically cover everything except New Japan, I believe. And on top of that, drop us a comment down below and just let us know what you're liking, what you're not liking, interact with us. We really appreciate that you're here with us along the way. I am JVL. I am here with the normal crew of Jesse and with Andrew, but we are also joined by the professor from the AEW Dynamite and Friday Night SmackDown Reviews. Professor, we've got you on a night where uh, you're usually watching SmackDown and you're here with us, and what's going on? Yeah, th I, I'm here to wash a particular taste out of my mouth with the with, uh, taste of gasoline lit on fire. It makes me feel a lot better being here. So you, I, you drank, the, drank the secret sauce. I just did. say we'll, we'll get gasoline and chocolate later. No, the, exactly. You know the secret sauce because the hint of chocolate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Man, I, I just love watching a product that doesn't have picture in a picture or or fifty <laughs> or, or 22 minute entrances or uh, and announcers that are articulate. And, and have you heard the lyrical, yes. vo the lyrical vocabulary on Ring of Honor? I'm sure you have. This is incredible. JVL's been mean, saying it for years. Yes, Caprice and Ian, uh, Ian Riccoboni so are the best commentary team in wrestling. We had a, there was a Georgia O'Keefe that got dropped. Yeah. Oh my God, that was there so was good. a Coxix term yep. used correctly. Uh, I wrote a few of them down. Super Mario was invoked at least twice. Uh, Sam Cook's in here. What yep. else do I have in mm -hmm. here? Flagpole Sitta. Like, whoa, look at the just all these things and the words that are used. And it's the so audience different. is not played down to the reference levels are there if you want them. They also yes. spam again from boxing all the way to the middle of nothing, like Greek theater. So we have a yeah. lot covered in this. Not all of it tonight, but uh, we uh, definitely had a kind of a gamut of matches as well because sure. we had everything from comedy spots all the way through to almost death matches at one point because people were just botching and falling on their heads. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot. Is this a thing? And, and not to, I don't, you don't have to debrief me because I, I, I don't want you to waste too much time on that. Is it a thing that everyone goes over to Ring of Honor to do their better work? Is that just a thing? <laughs> yes. Like, oh, AE, AEW, fine, whatever. Then they go over to Ring of Honor and just do incredible stuff. Like, oh my, like take like safe risks that are still, I don't know, man. I was very reminded of, I should be watching the other yes. product. The, it seems they get a little <laughs> more liberties, a little more to, to play with and, and essentially the, the sandbox of this promotion. I mean, we had um, a I did have a follow-up. Maybe this question is better for Mikey. You said we don't have to debrief you. Isn't the debriefing for Patreon only? That's what it is. We'll put it on Patreon. You just okay. sort of rewiring my cultish brain to get me back on the bro Ring of Honor channel. It's the new monthly series. Oh, debriefing. Debrief no, I thought it's different kind of briefs. Okay, never mind. Oh, a lot of jokes per second. Yeah, you're probably right about that, too. I mean, yeah, I for when we get the OnlyFans. Exactly. Okay. I mean, you I could still throw me ass John, up into a laundromat if you really want to. You're walking to. with joke storm, John, is basically what you're walking into. <laughs> we are Great. here. We are uh, st We're going to put our hands in here, folks, because we're going to observe the code of honors. Everyone's hands oh, in to shake hands. we do that here. That's fantastic. We do do that here. That's right. Uh, we are coming to you live from Edinburgh, Texas, uh, for this uh, entirety. So it is of one uh, location, which is great. Uh, on occasion, we'll get a, a taping of different locations, so at least it was nice to have it in one place. And the Edinburgh crowd, as small as they seem to be, we're really into this as well. As we opened up our uh, evening with the Work Horsemen taking on, uh, and I have to get this right, Cyrus GT and Briante RB out of yeah, CMLL, uh, a kind of thrown together uh, luchador team. And uh, we heard the first chance of the night that happened multiple times. Lucha Libre multiple times. Gentlemen, yes. how was this for your opener? Did it wet your palate for the rest of the evening? Yeah, I love this. I mean, it was fun to see these two new luchas. I really enjoy the Work Horsemen. There was a lot of really cool action in this, and I think it was a good balance against the Work Horsemen. And really, at the end of this match, what I came out of this thinking, really understanding, is the Work Horsemen are top five tag team in Ring of Honor. They're so good together. They're so entertaining. I mean, J.D. Drake is phenomenal. 
so yeah i thought this was a really great great way to start this off and that finishing combo that the workhorseman hit was just the nine brutal. to five dude yeah. well yeah, yeah that's right because there was a dolly parton reference that ricky yeah. gave us yes. yep it was those, that sequence of the last, what was it, maybe eight or nine moves or so that just boom, really fluid. Like they were sitting on that the whole time, I felt like. I, and when they... I'm so happy to see the workhorsemen back together working as a tag team because we had, what, what gentlemen, about three, four weeks where it was J.D. Drake doing his own thing, Anthony Henry doing his own thing. I'm oh, glad really? they're back together. John, much to your chagrin, Anthony Henry is growing on me. I don't think he's got a great character because he really doesn't have one. But as a worker in the yeah. ring, he is improving every time I see him. I'm glad they're back together. That spot where JD Drake caught, I want to say caught Cyrus and just jumping out of the ring and then threw him back in the ring. That was a brilliant spot. That was that was fun. Um, this was a little more than the enhancements match. It certainly wasn't the squash match. But my only negative about this match is I wanted this to go longer. I thought that it ended just as they were starting to find their footing. Sure. Yeah, I and it, uh, JVL have talked about, and I have talked about this about other promotions working with the luchas. Not everyone can really swing it. You know, sometimes they get a little, the communication's weird or, or just things are off. And I never want to blame language barrier because that's sort of a cop out. But yeah. can you get together? Can you work? Can you plan this out? This felt so smooth, so good. We talked about them being together, and I know it's a small thing, but once again, Anthony Henry came out in an AEW hoodie and. JD yeah. Drake came out in a workhorseman jacket. I'm like, is it really that hard to get him sure. one? Like, it's do they a only small have one thing, jacket? Is that but the you know, we wouldn't see Ring of Honor stuff in uh, AEW. I mean, except for the titles. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> so, subtle, Andrew. Very subtle. Andrew, it's very and, true, though. It's very oh, true where, yeah. where where it's usually one way running where you'll get all of the merch coming down one way, but also all the talent coming down one way. And then the other way is to just use them and burn them out, uh, which didn't happen in this match. It was overall a great thing. And I also yes. really loved on commentary that they set up who these luchadors are, yeah. why the workhorsemen matter, that they just took on Sting and Darby, like all these big things to get us mm-hmm. reinvested for those of us that may have not have watched the product as much as we came into this tonight. I don't know who that could be. But... We moved on directly from that to something we've been telling the professor about for months now. The entirety of the Dalton Castle saga continuing here oh as Lexi God. and Jerry Lynn are standing outside the laundry room, set up as Dalton's friend's dressing room, and we know what's going to happen, and they keep selling like his friend from Canada is here, and he's going to be able to do something. Uh, guys, are, aren't we enjoying just how this continues to grow and expand? I love it. I love, I love it. it. <laughs> when uh, when uh, Dalton called Taya uh, wild pig of filth. <laughs> filth of <laughs> filth. And then they were trying to figure out where uh, where uh, Slamtown is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which Slamtown. I'm pretty sure if I, if I saw Google Maps correctly, it's across the bridge from Titty City. So, you yeah. know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure it's, it's they're in the same county. The, they're the same like county. Johnny's same retort to uh, Dalton when he called him a ham and egger. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, wait, I really like ham and eggs. What, am I not supposed to have that anymore? <laughs> it's also a veiled Denny's reference, which is also great in that respect because it's a ham and egg slam, but that's beside the point. Yeah. Oh, it's it goes deep. Lots yeah, of it deep goes on co- multiple Denny's levels. Joke. We like wow. that. Wow. That's a breakfast it's like they joke. They care about their promos. How many takes do you think they do of these Dalton promos? Like how uh, they are good. Plus, I mean, how I, are they breaking? I would, I would not be surprised if they do this pretty easily straight through. The only one I would question is Jerry Lynn. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But Taya, Johnny, Dalton, and Lexi. Like, I yeah. mean, those. That's that's fire right there for promos. And I mean, I'm not. I don't. I I should. I will continue to watch this project because now I have the login saved. The <laughs> Lexi is incredible back there. Yes. Like one of the best straight characters. Z. The, the oh, best. The best. To, uh, the, the best backstage straight okay. character. Yeah. I'll give you the. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, and we'll see that later on. She went full I- improv set with Dalton in that final sequence we'll talk about. And I was like, she went all in. She was laughing. JVL, I understand. She was laughing, but reinvested in laughing. And it worked even better. Ah, oh, yeah. brilliant. Not to talk too far ahead, but. It's so much fun. And there's a polish here, if that makes sense. There, It's not haphazard. It's not, hey, you got one shot at this in an alleyway. 
it it's quite it just feels to me dalton walks around the arena and goes oh we got a laundry room i'm using that like you know what i mean yeah. like just sort of keys in on the environment stuff and There's, this is in line with the week before where he would they happened upon him in the back in a mop bucket <laughs> yep. you know you know and, and before that he's a mop the travel bucket. thing you know he knows how to play it up we've said he's the, he's the theater kid who's there doing a bunch of this stuff and just making skits up as he goes along oh. and playing it to playing the truth to the hilt that he believes everything he's saying yeah. to the point it has to be, as we'll see later in the night. We then move on from the comedy of the evening to uh, another push of a giant name in this business who has a rematch with a friend of his from the old AEW dark days, Ethan Page taking on Aaron Solo. Uh, Solo got a good showing in this. Page really made him look strong for a lot of the time there. I was yeah. quite surprised they were going to let him go as far as they did. Yeah, I was I was kind of happy. That was one of the things I liked about this match. I like that in the push for Ethan Page, it's not like he's just destroying the competition. We're actually seeing him struggle, but coming through, and I think that makes him look stronger. I love that cradle back body drop that he does. And the throw in the ego's edge just makes it look so different from the old razor's edge but also so much worse like in a good way and i love his adherence to the ring of or the code of honor uh, you know sure. aaron solo didn't want to shake his hand so he beat him up a little bit shook his hand and then at the end of the match when he's knocked out shakes his hand i love yeah. it mm -hmm. the, the forced the forced code of honor is, is my highlight of this match honestly and that's that's really not saying much this really didn't do it for me. I would have liked more offense from Aaron Solo. Sure. I never felt like uh, all ego Ethan Page at any point was really in power of losing this match. And sometimes we have these squash matches set up and we know like it's set up that way and we enjoy the journey. To me, it just it never really clicked. Like it felt like it never got the, the feet their feet under them for this match. Yeah, uh, I I could go either way. I still enjoyed watching it because it was by this point I'm in love with ROH. The there was a spot, I think, that at the middle three, four minutes, there was a little bit of hesitancy between the two of them. If you kind of caught those, are like, where are we? Where are we going? You want to throw this? You want to throw this? Mm -hmm. I do. I think Paige did sell a little bit of I am human. He did that turnbuckle fall at one point. There was another thing. Uh, I don't know if it was outside the ring or what, but sort of like, oh, my God, he really got me. Really trying to make him strong. Like other promotions, this would start the show. And now we have to build momentum from here. They put them in a spot where this could still be passable and you're not losing any momentum for a greater uh, show. And on top of that, a big shout out to Savon Smith for playing a really good involved ref who was blocking yeah. the, uh, the the stacked pin and all that stuff. So yeah. good on that at that point as well. Well put together uh, and in general, you're right as well, Jesse. The, the, uh, the drop from the Ego's Edge looks ridiculous. So that's called, so that's called Ego's Edge. When yeah, just paid, like the Razor's yeah. Edge, but it's okay. the Ego's Edge. I mean, I, and it's I like a release Ego's Edge or it's, Razor's Edge, which is it, why it's it's not as safe as Scott Hall's used to be because they place you down. Gary yeah. looking like yeah. it's kind of terrifying. I he mean, maybe the, the hair knife. does it, but he mixed yeah. the jackknife with the Razor's Edge. Is what yeah. He did. Oh, fair yeah. yeah. And you can't call it the Razor's Knife because that would just sound ridiculous. Yeah, and not knife. the Jack Edge. It's called the Razor Razor Jack Edge. That sounds like more Patreon content. Can we, can, yeah, can we call it the Hugh Jackman? Is that taken? I mean, he is a huge jacked man. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea on that one, but we transition from a one-on-one -on -one match. We wanted to get more people involved, plus a lot more luchadors involved. Yes. I was pleasantly surprised with this. We had Penta El Cerro Miedo and El Hijo de Vikingo taking on KM and not Sir Pentico, John nope. Cruz. <laughs> So much fun of this. Uh, I, we knew this was going to be a fast match. Having John Cruz in there to work with the two luchadors, yes. KM being the, the kind of heavy, this wasn't going to be as much of a squash. I did notice, though, this was like, okay, well, Penta's in it. We have to have that slow build at the beginning where Penta does his all his shtick to get to the match. But once Eho got in, it was a barn burner at that point. Well, and if someone was going to sell and play to Penta's like initial stuff, John Cruz is a great person to play to that. I, I didn't love that whole beginning. Now, somebody who doesn't watch the watch AEW regularly, I'm not familiar with Penta's shtick in the beginning. So to me, it was like, it was cool, but it was like it's going on a little long for me. I wanted this match to be so much better than it was. Honestly, I was slightly disappointed in this one. And again, I might be the minority just like it was on the past, the most recent match, but it was just okay. Now, it was very well worked. I will say that. 
but nothing really blew me away about it. It just seemed like a match that I'd seen before. I've seen uh, Vikingo do so much better. I've seen John Cruz do so much better. It was just, it was okay for me. Yeah, I kind of, I felt like this was kind of a dip too. I, I again, like it was, it was worked really well. I wasn't wowed by it necessarily. I'm glad that Vikingo's not killing himself. Like every time I see him, I haven't seen him in a while. I sort of watching him, like, please don't die, yeah. please don't die. Okay, so. Still taking risks, still, still, you know, walking tight ropes and whatnot. That you last know, second corner escape was pretty well timed. At that yeah. point, if he hadn't gotten out of the way there, <sighs> yeah. Well, and yeah, that it's funny. Bad. I never noticed that John Cruz has Lucha Strong on his tights, yes, uh, which does. is kind of a fun thing for him to nod to. And I gotta say that like taint drop kick that he took was <laughs> brutal. Is that, that the that, name? Is the taint drop? Kick? I mean, I don't know, but that That's was what we're calling it now. Cause... Oh Woo! man, nobody wants to take one of those. Taint no the, fun. He's, he's one of those workers that knows, like Dolph Ziggler, knows how to throw his body. Yes. I got the dad joke. I'm moving past him. <laughs> he knows how to. So how to just Andrew just jabs us in there like a beautiful. But he uh, he knows how to throw his body around like Dolph Ziggler yeah. and make things look worse than they are, and he knows how to land safely while looking incredibly horrible for that landing. So wait, I'm, you I'm confused. You said Dolph Ziggler. I think you mean Nick Nemeth. Sorry. I don't know who that is. I just know <laughs> Dolph Ziggler from WWE. Is there another oh, you person? Mean Nicky. Another... Okay. Oh Ryan, yeah, from the... Ryan's brother. Right, right. Yeah, he's he's in that New Japan thing, right? Right now. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah, that smaller promotion. Also brought up quickly. They did mention JR is again battling cancer, so yeah. we want to send our best out oh. to JR at that point because this is about his third round of this now. Yeah. He's been yeah. That's what they're remarking get stuff. on. And so, yeah, I hadn't known that either, but apparently he's back. That's why he hasn't been featured on a couple oh, of the big events. Well, I heard whispers again. of that a long time ago. I didn't know that. Oh, man, that's horrible. Well, I mean, let's, I mean, I'll wish him well in a speedy recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, oh, indeed. Man. Hope to hear him at least one more time on our screens. As much as we complain about JR needs to go home, let's hope he's doing yeah. okay. Yeah, but, but not home home. Like, just... <laughs> home you know what i mean like go home to rest not home. No, you're not making this any better professor. No. it's sorry really I mean, worse. Yeah. carry on i'm going to clarify things by making it clear as mud <laughs> <laughs> and just again say more inferences of dying we transition out of that match though to billy starks backstage first time we've kind of seen her do a promo in a while because of the whole nyla rose thing she's been kind of not been featured because they didn't want her to interact with her and be sucked into this minion thing basically is handed by Lexi finally delivering the message to Billy that there's a mim being called and Billy's not having it. Billy's like, I got a match and Nyla knows where to find me. I'm not dealing with this stuff. I'm like, good on you, Billy. Hang on to what you're doing here. Don't give in to Nyla. That's not what you need. That It did make me nervous, though. My, my only thought was, oh no. Like, basically saying like, you know where to find me to Nyla was just, I was like, oh, what's gonna happen? So yeah, it definitely made me a little nervous for Billy. It, it was great at moving the story along. It was great for setting up what happens later in the night. I know nothing. Hooray! <laughs> well, you know who else knows nothing? Obviously, the TVs didn't know what was happening here as Johnny TV comes out for his match with Taya Valkyrie against <laughs> against Dalton's friend, El Hombre, <laughs> El Hombre de, Paco de Paco Real de Montana. The Mountain, the Peacock, mountain man. Peacock Man. Yes, the Mountain oh. Peacock Man. And... At first, I'm sitting there going, why is this in the middle of the card? Like, this should have been later on. This would have been more fun. I thought they were going to actually wrestle for two seconds before something yeah, happened, yeah. <laughs> even though it was just Dalton in a, in a bad beard and all that stuff. But the banter back and forth, the going in this, I've downloaded an app, and I meant to learn Spanish. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Walking like a zombie Sami Zayn down the stretch. <laughs> just, hey, hey. This, this was my moment of the night. I just, this was the best thing I have seen in wrestling forever, and I can't, I can't go against that. This was the best part of the night for me. I mean, even Johnny TV's like, I'd wrestle you, but you smell like cheese. <laughs> yeah. Rick Abani, try, you're like going all in, like, that's not Dalton Castle, you know? He doesn't have a perfect beard like that. And then the stuff the mics are picking up when Dalton's yelling at Johnny TV, you know, I'm going to Jackson Pollock your ribs. I'm going to smash your face into a Picasso. And you, and points to Taya, I'm going to kick you in the Georgia O'Keefe. No, Keith. Like, I had to write those lines down. They were so good. And well, then Johnny and, TV trying to explain it like, yeah. oh, Georgia O'Keefe. She wrote the pictures with the, the flowers. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 yeah. Oh, I get it. <laughs> well, and then Taya speaking in Spanish to him. I and love from that. Which was so much fun. Loved it. And then at the end, the way that Dalton was so dismayed about like their fake out about like, I'll tell you next week. 
and the way he just was just so heartbroken it god it's so good i love this, this feud this is goofy wrestling when it works right yeah because yeah. it, it doesn't Absolutely. feel goofy in the moment at all because it's genuine and truthful and all that theater <laughs> that we talk about like there's yeah. almost oh a my refinement god. to it that doesn't take it too seriously yeah and that's why yeah. it works absolutely it's overwhelmingly watchable overwhelmingly uh, engaging and you can't, and even though we knew the joke from the moment that his music played and all that stuff is, yeah. we still enjoyed every step they took with it and they didn't play down to us to say, oh yeah, he's not really not Dalton Castle. Yeah. Ooh, lampshade. No, it was played for laughs, but also played truthfully. Dalton trying to find a way to beat up Johnny TV. And, and Johnny and, and Ty it, Valkyrie are such good straight <laughs> characters to what Dalton's doing. Like every promo I've seen or that has been in the group chat or sent to me, it's always like, oh my God, they're just setting this up for Dalton every time perfectly. And it leaves us more intrigued for next week because now we yep. want to know, what did Johnny TV yeah. want next now? We got to wait a week. Oh I hate that. Watch them draw this out to revolution. They're oh, going to get so. it to revolution. Oh I so hope so. <laughs> we go from that promo to a pre-taped promo backstage with Shane Taylor Productions. And on one side... Really good way to set up Black History Month and 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 talking about like the 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 people in this business that need to be recognized mm -hmm. and also inviting them to come along with them. At the same time, there still was no filler to this. It was a good sentiment, but not a lot of forward movement. Sure, if you get my my meaning. I feel like this was, and this was probably the most memorable promo I've seen from Shane Taylor promotions. I felt like we saw the difference of like character between them. Like obviously Lee Moriarty seen him before that, before he was with Shane Taylor. But this was the first time that I was like, okay, I think I kind of understand what this faction is and what they're going for. And I feel like we have been standing still and we just took a step forward. It's not a big one, but like I can see where you're going now. Let's keep that going. But yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a lot of forward momentum. But it's more than we've had in months. Hmm. I literally took my hat off because I'm going to say hats off to Shane Taylor because I'm not a fan of him. I've never really been a fan of him. I don't really get it. But out of all that I've seen of him, this was his best promo to date. Up until that weird snort he did at the end, like I was into it. This was a very good promo for him. He's shown improvement, so you know it may not be a step forward. However, it's it's improvement, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Sure, I and I I, I, I can't speak directly to it because I don't know a lot of um, his past work. We talk we can talk about him in the ring in a little bit. To echo kind of what JVL was speaking to, yeah, I hope that this isn't just the lip service thing that we get all the time. Like I genuinely hope that this is a step forward. Like we're speaking to like, Hey, start acknowledging this uh, discrepancy, this marginalization of these athletes. We then have a match coming up after all the stuff being talked about with Billy Starks taking on Arya Thorne. This was not only a nice way to set up the, uh, the thing coming afterwards. Yes, Jesse. I think we skipped a promo. We're back we? Oh segment. yes, we did. I am so mad. I skipped all this. Lexi looking for Maria. Hmm. I forgot. Lexi Nair in her second role of the night in a promo backstage, finding Maria. Maria dragging her over to see Mama's boys beating up Serpentico ostensibly on the floor. They're kicking the crap out of him. They're going at him. We then have Angelico come out to try to save Serpentico, but it's not Serpentico. It's they Serpentin, no. But it's not John Cruz Serpentin, no. It. It's random staffer? Yeah. Carl the intern? I don't know. <laughs> Joan from payroll? That's, I didn't, I, this was kind of lost to me because I don't know the context. So mm. now it makes way more sense for what you just said. Though. <laughs> I thought it was a really clever setup to yeah. bait them in and to beat them up. I mean, aside from that, it, you know, it was what it was, but the setup was pretty clever. I was happy with that. Yeah. I do have to say one thing I really enjoyed about this was, I mean, I enjoyed the whole thing, but there was a subtlety that I noticed because we only heard it twice but the road case that they threw Serpentino into and then Angelico, it was right up against some of the trussing. So every time they hit it, you could hear a slight ring, like when you hit an aluminum baseball bat. Hmm. And you could just hear that as they hit into it, and it just gave it an extra quality of like hearing that impact. I didn't really? notice that, but I love that attention to detail. 
for, for the professor at this point, there's been a long ranging couple week uh, rivalry with these folks. Basically, they were all on the same team together, Angelico Serpentico and the Mama's Boys. Uh, they were cost, basically, the, their Mama's Boys feel that Serpentico and Angelico cost them the match. They okay. now want to take them out. They stole Serpentico's green mask during the last match they had. Uh, stealing to beat him, they took the Luchador's mask off, and so now he's in the black mask, and he has gone Serpentic Evil. Uh, so it's, evil. it's right. been interesting to see that, and as we get into later in the night, you'll see why that comes back to do it. Now mm. we move on to Billy Starks and Arya Thorne in the ring. I will say, you know, even as we get to the promo afterwards and what happened with that, which was amazing to get through, Billy showed me in the first couple minutes real ring awareness of the fact of we're going to do chain wrestling, we're going to do the wrist lock bits back and forth, but I'm not going to sell it like, oh, we're doing the wrist lock bits. Aren't you lucky? We're in the first step of the match. She had them up and like dragged, and she was really emphasizing like her style of doing it versus just you turn the wrist and you hold it this way. It was like it's up against her and like holding stuff up. And I love that when there's personality and basic moves in your moveset. Well, she had that beautiful like roll through with the try to roll out of it and came up through it. And I mean, I felt like what we got from this and part of that may have been Thorne's performance too along with it was it was like we could see the strength that Billy has and I love I love pissed off Billy because she's so happy and friendly in the beginning and then when she had that leg lock on and Thorne hit her in the back of the head it I was like oh that's it you just made Billy mad and when you make someone that's that happy mad like that and especially with what we've seen from Billy what she's learned from Athena Oh, I love I love that character development that she has. Is that, is, is that the sequence where she just starts wailing on her knee, right yes, in that moment? Yes, it yes. Was, I love that that hint of dialogue in that moment. Mm-hmm. There. It was just sort of this, like, oh, we're gonna talk about this. Oh no, wait, no, we're not gonna talk about this. I'm just gonna hit you. Yeah, I love stuff like that, and it just tells me that you're giving it space to breathe. You're actually uh, using words to speak to the psychology of the match and whatever else. Like, I, I thought that was great. Whatever that submission was that Billy did at the end, I don't even know what you would call it. That was a thing of what art. That was, was art. That? that was a thing of beauty. It was like a hammerlock, I'm... chicken wing, cross face. Like, I don't know, but I loved the fact that she locked it in, and until she pulled all the way back, she was just staring at Nyla the whole time. It was it was so good. And and Billy got a win via submission, which yeah. I haven't seen before. I know Billy uh, works in other promotions, but I hadn't seen that. So I was happy to see her add another kind of finish to her arsenal. Hammerlock, chicken wing, crossface sounds delicious. Along yes, with a does. recliner to lie down on, because that's what the base yes. part was to get the basically the yeah. uh, the bow and arrow lock to pull it backwards. A reclined chicken wing, <laughs> hammerlock. Yeah, it's it's a still reclined delicious. chicken lock, Ch- cross chicken lock. That's a combo meal. Yeah, all right, I want that. Yeah, the Starks Express. Uh, but, but this she just was... gets better. <laughs> yes, because she was actually staring at someone who would come down to the ring with a table essentially <laughs> thinking that she's going to be beating her up but no she's like you do you Billy you get on Nyla Rose has appeared in the best cowboy hat ever Glamour like cowboy girl. boots <laughs> oh my god it was wonderful and she's like just there to support her and she's like I'm sorry like after the match she's like, I'm sorry I didn't mean to throw you off but you did your thing good on you now you either have to come down here and talk with me or I'm going to put you through this table I, I don't want to say I was cheering for going through table because I knew it was coming but, but luckily, I was able to forget just a split second mm-hmm. before the tip, right? Like, it's like, oh, you're sitting at the table. You're obviously the one going through it. But for they they paced this out just well enough to where, oh, yeah, I forgot. Wait, what was behind her again? Table. Like, oh, that worked. <laughs> and that return. Oh, my. I was yeah. like, In the way that Billy so sold happy. it. Oh, no. my. It was just. I love the relationship between Athena and Billy and and with Lexi too, but like how much Billy has matured and obviously she's so young, she's growing every single time we see her. But her and Athena, I love what they've done because they could have gone the way that those relationships so often go when it culminates in fighting for the title. Sure. And they didn't. Like they went in a whole other way and I love it. It's ugh, so good. The two of them together are a perfect balance for each other and in this in this instance to step up and defend themselves against the giant threat that is Nyla Rose I will say on the table bump uh, I was worried because she flew back quite far she hit her head on the transition between the floor Mm -hmm. and the ramp and 
she didn't seem phased by it, or at least didn't sell it. But I was like, "Ooh, that is that's tough. Like that's yeah, hurt sure. and neck like whiplash there." So has has Athena okay. been out? Has she been gone yeah. for a while? Or, okay, mm-hmm. since right. about the first week of January when Nyla attacked her, she's been gone. Okay, and I think okay. she was actually she was already out when they recorded that promo of Nyla first attacking her at her school because she had to. I think she had to get surgery or something. She was recovering okay. from something. She was also allowed to take time off. She yep. defended the title for a year or more. Yep. So, I mean, like, she needed some time off. Uh, but they've kept that title hot and kept the storyline going without her being there in the best possible way. Uh, so this was a great culmination to that overall. So I don't know if I have a match of the night, but this was probably my moment of the night, I, I would say, because honestly, I looked down at the rest of my notes, and to me, the, the program could have ended here. It should have. Honestly, it could have. It should have. <laughs> but we, we did transition into our first Fatal 4-Way of the night. This was Trisha Dora versus Kira Hogan versus Diamante and the new addition of Layla Hirsch because those three before were in a 4-Way match last week. And I was like, did I just see this match? I might have, but it was different. But Layla Hirsch is in there to take the pin on this one and get and further her story with Rachel, which kind of felt a little weirdly put together. I will say the spot that I enjoyed in this was Diamante getting forearmed by all three other women like around and around Robin for a while. And there was good energy in it. They did do a lot of stuff yeah. where a lot of people didn't leave the rings. Everyone's still yes. in the ring taking their turns. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't the greatest either. It was just kind of a filler match. It, it didn't really work. I mean, to me, the, the highlight spot was when Diamante pulled that snack, snap suplex and onto everybody. Yes. Outside of that, this served as a purpose to kind of continue the story of the rift between Layla Hirsch and Rachel Ellering. But it didn't really do anything for anybody in the match. I I was yeah. I was not a fan of this match. I uh, go ahead. I I mean, I like all the performers. I think they did a great job, but I and we get another one later on the night like let's highlight some of the performers in singles competition so we get to actually see them and they get time both people in the match. Because with these fatal four ways or however many people they throw into the ring at a time, it just, it's, you're not getting quality from everyone. You're just getting a little bit of it and no one gets that real big chance to shine. I do love that there was a repeated instance of the two that are actually in a relationship in this match kept going after each other. Mm Mm-hmm. And that was super funny just to see because, you know, that's probably really fun for them to get to work together. Um, But yeah, I'm, I want to see them all wrestle each other individually. Like I would have rather seen this been a match with Layla Hirsch and somebody else in singles competition and have the same outcome happen and use that to further that story instead of having to put all these people in there. I like that they get TV time, but And that's the hope going into next week, as we heard that the women's television tournament uh, is starting next week. So we should be seeing those matches. Professor, what did you feel here? Uh, I f- this came out. These two Fatal 4 ways had some hiccups, and I feel they're different in that this one felt almost thrown together quickly. Like they didn't do the service to the women. They were like, oh, hey, by the way, you got two days. And they went, whoa, hang on. Right. It just felt like that sort of you have a group project and nobody talked to each other, but now we got to go, but you're good workers thing. So there were some moments here that, you know, I was excited with that snap suplex Jesse was talking about where, you know, the the other two are on the ground, like, no, 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 no. Like that whole section was kind of cool. Now there are a few spots, but, but you're right. In the end, it was sort of like, we, no one got to shine, shine. And you didn't push anyone's story really forward. Uh, and I hate using this word, I don't even want to say it, but this is kind of what filler looks like, right? Where it's sort of like, hey, you're here, you're in, go, just take your 10, 12 minutes. Oh, well, but yeah. I'm also spoiled because for me, I'm not used to watching more than one women's match and one that goes this long. So if, even for me, I'm like, this is great. <laughs> I, I will say what, what also told me this was a filler match was the ending. Yes. You're in a fatal four-way survival match. And you can get disqualified from using a chair. Now, my normal thing, I think, in multi-person after three people is that there are no disqualifications. So what are the rules? And does that matter to set this up just for a stacked pin? So Yeah, who's going to win that? Who's like, who wins or who loses based on the, like, the other three win if Diamante uses a chair? Did the other two lose because she used a chair and gets disqualified and Layla Hirsch wins? Right. 
that doesn't make any sense. It made no sense. I think yeah. well, in the end, it, it just made Diamante look that much stronger and in more interesting to me oh, in sure. the end. So that kind of uh, phased it that way. I, I don't, but yeah, I think you're right. Outside of that, it's like, eh, why have, it's like biting, right? Like biting used to be a big thing and now everybody bites everybody. Or it's like, well, why do you, what, that doesn't, how do you even lose these matches? So, I don't know. Yeah, I will say, I think there were too, too many matches in this. So if we were going to have this Fatal 4-Way and we got rid of a couple of the other matches, we could have had this been longer and then give them more time and develop more things mm-hmm. into it. Sure. But maybe use know. more chairs. Who knows? Yes. We, we then transition from a four-way match to an eight-person tag. I'm going to say this off the top. <sighs> I know I'm going to get some crap from this for you guys. This was my match of the night. This was the, my most fun worked, well put together. I enjoyed this because it was Griff Garrison, Cole Carter, and Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty versus the Infantry and the Iron Savages. The Iron yes. Infantry. The Iron Infantry. Which is funny. Jack yeah. Jameson including them on that, all of them getting involved in the intro. I mean, you know, uh, Carly Bravo drinking the secret sauce and going nuts. <laughs> like, yeah. it was not the cleanest match. It was not the best worked match. It was not a technical masterpiece. But, like, stuff like taking people to Titty City and then, like, uh, Rick and going, oh, I've done some research on that br- that chest hair there. It's like Brillo pads. Obviously, we don't want to go there. The transition of Maria trying to bring them away from Titty City to a different Titty City and that not taking it away. That Like, it just was – it was – a spectacle that I needed to come off of the last match and go, that's right, we're having fun. This is great. Yeah. And then seeing Shane Taylor and, and Beefcake, two meaty men taking each other out, like seriously, so much fun. I, yeah, I love that. I mean, if you're going to do a match with this many people in it, that's what you got to do. And I think it really succeeded because of, I mean, really, the Iron Infantry played a big part in the success of this match. But to be fair, they, they can't wrestle nobody like there can't be no one there so they had to have someone to work with and i think we got to see obviously uh, the mama's boys have gotten really good at being the the take the team that takes the beatings so it worked really well into that and i love that we played with the mythology of ring of honor and this uh the secret sauce the savage sauce <laughs> just souping up like super saiyan you know Carly Bravo was amazing. I loved that that played into that. It was such a good pairing between these two teams. Uh, I think they're definitely up there with um, the Workhorsemen as the top five tag teams in um, Ring of Honor. Yeah, I, I love this. And Carter pulling hair out of his mouth after going to Titty City was uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> I saw Jesse's eyes get very big when I mentioned this is my match of the night. I think you have a contrary opinion to this. I'll let the professor speak first. <laughs> you, can, you can let me go. That's fine. I've, I've talked about this on other episodes about other promotions here at Biconics. I have a hard time when there's thousands of dudes who just kind of go to free for all. And I've said this about trios matches sometimes, where sometimes they're just hastily thrown together and I don't really know where to look. look and we're sort of sacrificing some story for just wild mayhem. But don't get me wrong, I love me some wild mayhem. I kind of went back and forth. I thought the beginning of this, I thought was strong with intros and everything else. There's, I think from there it was sort of a, hey, where are we? Miscue, sort of where are we? What's happening next feel? I do think the second half got stronger as I got a little looser. I feel like they felt out where they were, they dialed into where they were going and how to work with each other. And again, if you're gonna do goofy wrestling, make it truthful and sell it. That whole sauce bit was hysterical to me. <laughs> I thought that was fun. If you're going to go goofy, go all the way goofy there. I'm honored to have met Titty Town and to see what that actually means and how that works. City, it's an entire city. City, I apologize. City, county, village, son. Right, I gotta gotta get that right. Again, I'm super impressed with the tag, the tag team quality in Ring of Honor, which Andrew's been saying forever, and I apologize, Andrew. I believed you. I just... I had to watch it. They all look really well together. They mm, they throw up those softball spots to each other, and they always hit it really well. Uh, I hate to say this because I love the Iron Savages. This I didn't get this. I didn't get why we had this. I don't think it highlighted any particular member of any of the the four teams that were in there. 
the titty city spot and the distraction that was fun i'll give you that i like the fun <laughs> and i like watching carly bravo it's just, why and and looking at it and going hmm who, who lost again in this one i don't even have it on my notes here yeah iron savages lost again it's is that just, their, is that their thing they lose yeah, not not usually, but yeah, a lot more times than not is it when they're on AEW. But well, I mean, it wasn't for me. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Sure, that's fine. We'll move on from here. This this was not for me. I've got more rage at the end, and I know that's what John's looking for. So more rage. I, I I will say, I think one person that shined in this, and it played into what happened afterwards as well, is we're seeing more of Maria and Maria being kind of like vindictive the way that she was yelling at her team, including Shane Taylor promotions, the way that she was like giddy about showing Lexi backstage about, you know, her boys beating up Serpentico. I th- it, we're getting to see this and it feels like, you know, I think Maria's having fun with it, but before she was kind of relaxed and now she's just, it's like, you get that sense that she's got a little bit of evil in there. And, you know, I'm, I'm liking it because I think it adds to the mama boy, mama's voice because they're kind of her attack dogs. She's invested and she's finally invested in it to the point where they're walking up the ramp and get attacked by Serpentico in black mask again, taking them out there as best he can, really getting out there. And he gets the drop on them both and then gets his mask back from Maria. She ends up having to hand it back to him and just you think he's going to achieve that and get away with it. He's beat up from behind. She gets it back. This is mine. This is mine. She is that final third piece of that triangle to make them killers. And so hopefully Griff Garrison's skill and Cole Carter's simpness will really hang on in the best, in the best ways. Cole Carter did have a crazy drop kick in this match. He hit a yes. drop kick that I swear he paused for a second in the air. Like, he changed yeah. direction. Yeah. The, it, he wasn't in position, so it's great. Who's the one with the glorious mane? That's Griff, Griff Garrison. Garrison. That's Garrison. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. We cut from that, though, to another backstage promo. This was, I don't know why we had this promo. Mm-hmm. You're trying to further the dissension between the ranks. Rachel is slowly turning heel in a great way. Layla, I love you. <coughs> you need a mouthpiece. You cannot speak on camera right now. You don't trust yourself enough. It's not that you can't do it. You just don't trust what you're saying. Layla would do great with a Paula Hay woman. This, the only note I wrote here was awkward. That's all it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, last time I stopped by here at the Ring of Honor was, I want to say September-ish, somewhere in there or so, maybe yep. a little sooner than that. And still cardboard on the mic, like not getting the reps in, not uh, trying, it just felt forced. It absolutely needs a mouthpiece maybe i also think that this pairing doesn't help because they're both such muted personalities they're not big flamboyant one so you have the story arc of two folks who are just kind of meh even with each other it seems like it doesn't get me invested so this did not set them up to succeed long term either to sort of okay great you're here no. so we move on from that promo to a match that i was worried about I know that Gravity is a great worker. I know that Lee Johnson can pull out things in the ring. But in general, Lee Johnson matches are kind of formulaic. And even with a luchador, it's kind of the same way. I wasn't surprised by this match. It was what I thought it was going to be. I think Gravity did a great job trying to give some energy to it. But overall, it was kind of just an okay match for the most part. It wasn't terrible. Yeah, I mean... It was a good match, but there was nothing that stood out for me, really, um, especially having seen these guys all wrestle before. Even Gravity, I've seen much more interesting matches from him. And I'm sorry, but what is Lee Johnson's character? What's his story? Because at this point, he's just a ath- and he's an athletic performer, and that's it. Like, he's I have no reason... Husband. Yeah, I have no reason to care. I, I have as much reason to care about him as random local talent number five. It's just I've seen him more on my TV than other people. And do he something keeps with winning. Him. Yes. Why are they pushing him if they have nothing developed behind it? Yeah. I, I like it to Steve Blackman syndrome. <laughs> Good. That's, that's a throw. Oh, I actually liked watching Steve Blackman. 
Yeah, Angry Steve Blackman with the Kendall. He stick. also had a story. Like, we had some kind of thing behind him. Like, I feel like I don't know anything about Lee Johnson's background that has me invested in him. I don't feel like I know anything about his wants from his professional wrestling career to be invested in him. And there's no character. Like, anybody could be slapped into that role that's athletic and can perform professional wrestling moves. So I've seen Gravity four times now. Twice Ring of Honor, once on an AEW something, and I can't remember. All of them were losses. Does he ever win? Yeah. He does? Okay, I'm just checking, because I haven't seen one yet. <laughs> Go back and find when he teams up with Dalton Cass and the boys. That was oh, one that, of was, that was so, so much fun. fun. That sounds awesome. Yes. I, I like Gravity. I, I like the entrance. I like the, the feel and the take. It's very different than other luchas, and I'm happy to see that. Uh, maybe it was, just, it was just my anticipation of seeing him and be like, oh, hey, cool. This was just sort of a, 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 a flat match. There was that dueling duck walk sequence they had, which I was like, that's just wrestling training. Like, that's just... <laughs> That's, you know, practice every day. Gotta get our warm-ups in. Yeah, exactly. So it left me wanting way more, which is unfortunate. Well, luckily you were given more. Because once we got out of that match, we continued the saga of the evening. Lexi waiting for Dalton Castle to come back to the dressing room and just, just you know, get his thoughts on dressing how room. he has to wait another week and Dalton is losing his mind, gets packed into a dryer and asks for more cheese. I mean... But he's pretending, oh, oh, he's having a heart attack. And Lexi, what can I do for you? Bring me cheese. Yeah. I, I love that Lexi is finally reaching her limit with Dalton. <coughs> that she's just like, I can't do this anymore. Like, this is just, no, you're being ridiculous. Like, and the fact that once he crawled into that dryer, she just closed the door and, like, leaned against it. Like, I, why? But it's so good. So good. I'm, I mean, if you can end your promo with being ass up in a dryer and it makes sense, you are doing something right. And you should see the look my wife is throwing me from 10 feet away. So Show good. her the promo. Show her the promo. I will, I'll, you will watch this and you will appreciate. She she is a doubter. I will welcome her to the cult another I'm time. I'm pretty sure you can find collections of their promos, both the Dalton Castle and the TV's uh, yes. feud and the Nyla, uh, Nyla Rose the compilations uh, yes they're so good so great and and again i go right to director brain where i'm like how many takes did you do do you just riff on this stuff are you just going heads up and saying like i want to know i just want to watch from so much fun the on set would that be so much fun to see that oh. everything else and then of course we're not out of the woods with the, with the tvs yet either because ty of valkyrie's back out with johnny tv to take on kelly kate who also glad to see her back again yeah. jobbing out again she's wonderful but seeing Taya take her to school in a lot of different ways was incredible to watch. I'm this was one of Taya's best work matches she's had in a couple of weeks. Really? And I think it was a lot more fun and fluid to see her work this way. Okay. Is yeah. Kill, is is Killer Kate a regular? A regular mm-hmm. job of the stars so far. Okay, sure. Okay. And she was two she weeks was in a row, I think. Two weeks, yeah. I was gonna say she was here last week. Great. Good. Get the reps in. Yeah, that's exciting to see. I, the size discrepancy what's through me is, <laughs> is I was like, you know, here's three of Valkyrie and someone one quarter her size. <laughs> like, you going to get crushed. Yeah, it was. It, Go ahead. It was, it was an enhancement match. It was, you know, good to see Tayo get to work a little bit longer than a squash match. But, yeah. you know, it, it was what it was. I, yeah, I it, was ambivalent at best with it. It was basically a squash match, but I will say, I love watching Taya hit the Shania Payne. The w- every single time, Dude. like I want that. I've said it before. I want it to be a knockout finisher. I want her to hit that and the ref check and just be like, "Nope, they're out," because yeah, she yeah. hits it so yeah. vicious. That thing looks that would be scary, great. like in a good way. Like, oh my god! Like your soul has left your body, type stuff. It's a bump that I would see great stage combatants take on stage to really throw a crowd off. Like, sure. Yeah. We, we get that. We get the, the, the also the, the Blue Thunder Bomb that does nothing, of course, because you have to have that in every match like that. But we transition that to the announcement of the TV tournament, which we talked about earlier, the women's TV title tournament, which is finally happening. So, so excited. Yes. And we get our main event. Another four-way match. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. 
Where are the brackets? You said last week there were going to be brackets. Now Next you announced week. the tournament this week. First time you said tournament. Okay. Where are the brackets? Next week. Next week. I'm going to go crawl on my dryer now. <laughs> Johnny TV is going to tell you about it. Bring me cheese. <laughs> But we get to our main event, uh, which is Jack Cartwheel versus Willie Mack versus AR Fox and Commander. You want to talk about innovative offense in folks that like do it across the board. On paper, this was going to be the most flippy dippy thing you'd ever seen. I'll say, like, overall, you know, there were some ups and downs in this match, a couple of uh, weird spots. AR Fox, the moonsault fake out to the outside, that was insane. Yeah. My heart goes out to the Sacramento kid because I'm a simp for anyone from Northern California. That cartwheel stuff is wild. <laughs> that's just fun yes. to watch. And it's hard if you're, if that's in your name. Like, okay, you better be perfect every time. And absolutely is. You know, if your name is Mike Somersault and you just do somersaults all the time, you know, super fun. I'm glad to see Aaron Fox. I haven't seen Aaron Fox in forever uh, since since AEW kind of banished him and not that Ring of Honor is a banishment, but like you're not over here now, you're over there. I had fun watching this. I had a few moments of, oh God, uh, yeah, okay. But it's kind of great if your name's Cartwheel. If you don't know what to do, just do a cartwheel. Like you have a baked in way to get out of any situation. <laughs> I, and maybe it's because it was the last match of the night. This would have been one of those matches that I would have taken off the card. Uh, I was just, I don't know if I was just tired by the time I got to this, but, or if it's because once again, it was just another version of a match we've seen multiple times. Sure. Sure. I, I would have rather have seen any of these people in singles matches. I'm tired of these multi people matches. I'd like to see Jack Cartwheel in more singles competition. You know, I, would have loved to see Jack Cartwheel against any of these competitors that he was in there with. I would also like to see Jack Cartwheel like win more matches. I'm trying to. Because he is over. And if he was winning more matches, maybe we could see how he does outside of the ring. Because we already know he's sure. entertaining in the ring. But yeah, this was... Like I said, I think it may have just been because it was the end. It was the low point for me. And... I also, like like you were saying, JVL, like, on paper, this match could have been just blown the roof off way to end the thing, but my highlight was hearing them talk about during this match how Athena uh, was calling for some time at the end of the show. That's what I was looking for after they announced that. I was just like, cool, mm. let's get to that, because I know I'm going to love that, whatever it is. Right. So, It was well worked. That's, that's my note. Hmm. I... It was a good match. It was well worked. It just, this whole night didn't really do it for me. It was, I could have taken it off. I could have taken at least four or five matches off of this card, and it would have been a better program overall. Fair enough. I Maybe just because I'm coming from the other promotions where there's commercials and picture in picture and everything's ruined, I, I, I still had the momentum by the time I got it. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm spoiled in a different way. I'm not saying you're spoiled, but yeah. like I'm just used to a different cadence of show. So all of a sudden it's like, hey, we got one more for you. Oh, and it's this? Cool. And you let me, and you let me see it. me spoiled. The audacity. I mean, no. not... But, but look I where I'm coming agree. from. I will agree. We are, we are spoiled in Ring of Honor. We get some <laughs> amazing, amazing things. And I, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, not to speak for everyone else, but I think our frustration comes from the fact that we know what they're capable of as a company, all sure. the performers and everything. And so it's frustrating when we see things not used to the potential that they could be. Sure. And I do see kind of a through line that you, you, you've all been mentioning that I picked up on is some of these folks are just fantastic performers and they're killing it every week. But why? Where are you going? What's your story? What's your narrative? They don't have the narrative to lean on necessarily. But they just do wild stuff. And some of these matches, some of these sequences in here were just, they're having so much fun. That flagpole sitter or whatever it was called that Cartwheel did, where it was just that, I can't, I used to know the name of the gymnast thing. And you do the thing and then they fall over in the thing. It's, it's a flagpole stall. Yeah, it's you're holding it that way. Is that actually what it's called? I should have just said that. No, it's it, the, I thought it was the pommel horse uh, elbow drop he does. That's the over the top thing. We're talking about on the, on the side of the rope when he's like sideways out like a flag. Like oh, a the leg sweep? Yeah, yeah, the flagpole yeah. sweep, yeah. 
It was awesome. <laughs> we're just, so, Professor, we're all talking about this like, oh, yeah, it's that thing because we see it every week when yeah. he does it. Like, Jack Cartwheel is incredible. You get yeah. to watch that dude? That guy's here every week? The every week, yeah. Spicoli no, driver. Best the, four or five. Man. The cartwheel, what was that? Cartwheel, like, senton or splash that he did. I mean, it, yeah. Awesome stuff. And so yes. different than everyone in there, right? I, yes. think, I think this is a well-booked match on paper, like we were all saying. Uh, maybe they weren't put in a great spot because they had to close the night. The crowd was kind of in and out of this one. I will admit that too. There was a few moments where they're trying to, hey, we're still here. Hey, pay attention. Which and Ring of Honor is before the main card stuff, right? Is that kind of how that tends to go? Okay, it's so, before, before Collision. So this could oh, okay. So this could have been the symptom of that too, maybe. But I mean, I had fun watching it. Yeah, and, and I we mean, had fun being in there with you. And we end the night on a very fun moment as Athena finally is like, we're back together. We're okay. I, I have honey jack and greens apple skittles in the car. Go get them, everybody. Run. We're, we're back. And she thinks she's safe. She's, you know, t- t- going around something like, Naya, I see what you did here. I am here. I am your forever champion. And Naya comes in and wrecks her on the catering table. Like, how to end a thing perfectly. I, have- the, the line she says at the end, which I'm sure is what Andrew's going to say. Go ahead. And she's like, psych, you thought that just it sent me over the top. I was like, Yeah, that's that's Nyla Rose just being her. No, my favorite part was after she says that, she picks up something from the table and takes a bite out of it like it's an apple. It was an orange. I thought it was a grapefruit. I mean, whatever it was, it no was not an something apple. that you Please have to on. peel. Yeah. And she just picked on. it up, took a bite out of it, like not even a thing about it. And I was Let just like, you- Yep. I'm going to go to the tape and see what she's taking a bite of right now. So, oh, so she pulled a Tony Storm. That's a straight orange. <laughs> Nyla Rose has found her niche. They're yes. allowing her to be herself. <laughs> and she is so good. Yes. Uh, I it. feel disappointed for the craft services. You think Tony Khan would have way better food back there. It's just white bread and fruit. I mean, that's what he feeds Ring of Honor people. Right, yeah. That's a shame. I want to know the spread. For, what's the spread for dynamite? Are they getting real food and sushi and stuff? Sounds like a college club down in Florida. White bread and fruit. <laughs> this was a good ending of the night. And to, to end our night tonight, gentlemen, I want to get how you felt about this. We kind of got how our feelings were overall, but we need the empanada scale. Jesse, Andrew, Professor. How many empanadas are you giving this wonderful, wonderful uh, event that we went to? You do empanadas over here, too. Is that all by Conics? Are we on the empanada scale now? Apparently not. It's, whenever I'm here, we're always doing empanadas. Oh, fantastic. All right. Okay, good. Well, Professor, I'd like to hear your, your summation of the night as somebody who doesn't watch Ring of Honor regularly first. As someone who's who thrives on this stuff and got a happy taste of it much needed to get other burned images and feelings out of the brain... I love that, like, this is, and the, the women's matches, representations there, the fun's there, the goofy wrestling's there, the genuine fun for doing what they're doing. We kind of nitpicked, I hope everyone's okay. Somebody took a fall back there. I hope everyone's okay. I mean, this is, this lives in high eight, low nine land for me. Like, this is great. If this was any other promotion, we would be talking about it being the highest of the year so far the last five, six, I don't know how many weeks of wrong. 2024, right? If this was wrong. if this was called Dynamite or this was called something from WWE, it would have been like, oh yeah, this is a 10. This is a this. Look what they're doing. So uh, I like what you all watch over here. So yeah, this is that 8. 8.5, almost 9, 9 range for me. Come with us. Come with us. This is how it starts. Yeah. Go ahead, Jesse. You can go next. Oh no! Is this bad? so? So um, is this a curve? Is this going to go way dip way down now? I, I looked at this kind of critically, and if you take away Dalton Castle and Athena off of this card, I, to me, compared to what they've produced in the past, this is borderline unwatchable for me. No way! Yeah. Wow. And, and I hate to say that, and. I need to be true to me. I need to be me. Sure. I'm the only one who can be me. Absolutely. And I don't mean to say this with offense to anyone here, but you know, I, I guess we are spoiled, but it feels like you're standing for the illusions and I'm standing for everything that is real. This was a four. Wow. No wow. way. What's a 10 for you? We haven't found it yet. 
We've gotten close in the last year a couple times, but yeah. But I, I'm comparing this now. I, I'm coming from a different place. I suppose I, I am quite spoiled, but considering the the reviews I've been doing since how long have I been doing this with you guys, John? About almost almost nine months. Yeah. 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 What they've put on and what they can do compared to what they've done, it, it didn't do it for me. It, it, this wow. to me was not a great night. A great night of wrestling. I missed the Renegades, which you know Andrew will giggle at. I missed having the Righteous on there. Yeah. It would have been nice to have Dalton in an actual match. Like his story, it worked so well for his story. But I'm trying to think of things that would have brought this card up, and, and those would have. Some of these matches I would have cut. This could have been an hour show, and it would have been better. Damn. Yeah. No. I mean, I can't. Di- I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with. Like, I can see where you're coming from on this, and I, I ranked this show as an eight. Because I feel like the first two thirds of it had some really strong stuff in there, and for me, it really tapered off at the end. I feel like there was two matches that I would have gotten rid of, and I think had we done that and maybe paced some other ones out a little bit better, restructured some of the night, it would have been an even stronger card. But I think we had a lot of good storytelling, some really quality matches. But I really, really would like to see some freshness put into the structure of the Mm. Ring of Honor weekly shows. You know, we've talked about the multi-people matches. Uh, I'd like to see some more singles actions, especially because it kind of feels like so many people are waiting for titles to come back to Ring of Honor, whether it's the new television title, the titles that are not being defended in this company, we, at this point, we really don't have a title that's being around. The most we're hearing about is the women's TV title. Uh, Athena's back now, so hopefully we'll see more of her there, and I love what Nyla's been doing. But Kyle Fletcher started out really well this year defending that title in Ring of Honor, and we haven't Every seen week, him for yeah. a while. Oh, no, no, it's, yeah. it's been a week. He defended it last week, he defended it the week before, but then he got dragged up into that stupid you know thing that went on this week with Jericho and a bunch of other stuff. So and I can only assume the same thing happened with the uh, undisputed kingdom. Yeah. I don't think Kyle Fletcher was here last week. I think he was here the week before. Yeah. You're, you're probably right. And, and undisputed era again, we've seen them, but we've only seen them improving ground matches. And we all, I believe more someone's going to win that title in a random thrown together title match than a proving ground match at this point. So I just want to see some, a little bit of changes, some more depth to things. But overall, I thought there was some really good stuff and the promos. I mean, it might be the thing that's winning, but they're really good. They are. I will say, and I'm not trying to cut anyone off here, um, one of our lovely colleagues taught me the phrase, don't yuck someone's yum, and that's not what I'm trying to do here. If you enjoyed this, you enjoyed it, and that's that's certainly a great thing. And Andrew, you bring up an interesting concept. I would like to see this, this whole night redone with a different structure like if they changed the card and changed the timing and places and matches and promos i feel like it would have been better and i would like to see that before I, you know i commit the decision to this could have been better if we did that. yeah I'm glad, I'm glad you spoke to that because that's something john and i talk about on dynamite sometimes where sort of the order of this screwed up so many other things and particularly when it looks like folks are meddling with it before the show starts like within moments of or whatever you can always kind of feel that when that's happening Uh, No, I don't feel yucked at all. Hey there, Biconics Wrestling fans. It's Editing JVL here. Unfortunately, at the end of the review, just about before I was going to give my rating, we had a bit of a technical issue on our end, and so we had to shut things down. But we're still going to get that to you. I gave this a high 6, low 7 for this evening. I know Ring of Honor can do better, but it also was entertaining as heck, so very much enjoyable. For Jesse for the professor, for Andrew, and for myself. Thank you so much for joining us on this. Hands in to observe the Cone of Honor. And of course, remember as always, you're Biconic, we're all Biconic. And we'll see you in the next video.